It turns out that cylinders, plane walls, and spheres are not the only shape that can be modeled exactly. As a matter of fact, we can model a so-called semi-infinite plane surface. Now the idea here, think about, think about the Earth, okay? If you're standing on the Earth, and this is where this model is used a lot, and let's say the temperature drops outside. Okay, it was a nice warm day, but the temperature just drops. That seems to be what's happening right now here in Indiana. Okay, so nice warm temperature during the, during the day. You turn on your air conditioning, and at night, <laughs> you know, the temperature drops like crazy. And what happens? Well, the earth is going to give up heat to the air. As a matter of fact, it's something that happens in my pond all the time, right? I, I wake up in the morning. The pond is still warm from the previous day's, uh, you know, thermal energy. The air is cold, and so there's a lot of, of condensing uh, water in the air. The, the water is, is not really boiling off, but is vaporizing and going back into the liquid phase very quickly, condensing into droplets that are suspended above the, the pond because the air is so cold. So there's heat transfer from, in that case, the pond up to the air, and that's generally what we're talking about, a fairly large area where there's a single direction of heat transfer from the pond water straight up into the air, or from the earth straight up or straight down to or from the air. So the body extends, as far as we're concerned, the body extends in all directions for forever. So in the case of my pond, as far as I'm concerned, the depth goes on forever. Uh, the same thing in the case of the earth, as far as I'm concerned, also the, the pond goes on forever, but that doesn't make sense. My pond is only like a quarter acre surface area. So how, is this, how does this make any sense? It's not so much that these are actually infinite bodies. The point is that there's only a single direction of heat transfer that is normal to the plane surface. That's the key. That way we only have heat transfer in one direction. We only have one coordinate and one direction. Now this is the solution to the differential equation describing this problem. It looks a little less friendly than the last ones. The last ones look pretty bad, but this one looks like a bear. Now what on earth is this earth C? Well actually it's called the complementary error function. Again we're going to look at this as if it's just I get a number, the squealy number, xi, whatever we want to call it, I get a number and take the error function of that number, just like taking the sine or cosine of a number. That's all I'm really doing. Here's the definition of it. It's a, an integral. Um, my under, if I remember right, this integral is not solved. And if you solve it, you may, uh, may be quite famous, may be named after you, or maybe it's been solved by now, I don't know. But it can be certainly calculated numerically. So. Uh, we have a whole table of this error function. So if you know what it is you're trying to put into the error function, well, that's the argument. That's this xi parameter. And then you just, you know, if you have an xi of 0.1, just go over and read off the complementary error function of 0.1, and that's 0.8875. So it's really not all that difficult to use. It's kind of like a button on your calculator. But again, here you may have to interpolate. Now notice we use this in two separate places. Well, what's that E thing? Well, that's just the button on your calculator, the special number E, 2.7, whatever it is, right? E to the power of that exponent. And what about all the other terms in this thing? Well, X is the particular depth within the body where you're interested in the temperature. Lowercase t is the amount of time that has elapsed. Alpha is the thermal diffusivity of the body itself, the material the body's made from. H is the convective heat transfer co coefficient in the fluid outside, the, the you know, above the, the plane surface. K is going back into the body. It's the thermal conductivity of the body. We've already defined X, and I think those are all of the parameters. Yeah, those are all the parameters that go into this. And from it, we get the dimensionless temperature as a function of position. In other words, depth within the body and time. Now understand, this will not give us the temperature in the fluid above the surface, above the plane surface, right? This is only a model for the solid body. Now it turns out that a lot of times you can't actually use that equation. You basically end up trying to multiply zero by infinity, and it doesn't work. So fortunately, there is a chart that I'll show you how to use in an example problem. There's some details around with this that are important. I'll mention them now. But basically, you'll notice that the x-axis has one of the parameters that uh, xi parameter, and then the particular line you're on is h root alpha times time divided by the thermal conductivity k. So you just select which line you're on and again read off what looks like a dimensionless temperature. Now there's another case, that's the case of xi equals zero. This is a very special case just like before. This is the surface, okay, so if you're looking at literally just the vertical 
uh, axis. If that's where you're at on the x-axis, just the vertical uh, uh, line on the left-hand side, that's where you're asking about the temperature of the surface of the body. So this equation really is, is contained in the figure. Okay. What about this infinite term? What is that? Well, that's h root alpha t over k. This sounds a lot like what we had before. Remember when we said, what does it mean when it looks like the math is saying that the convective heat transfer coefficient is infinite? Well, this infinite line is a very special line. Just like before, this is the, the line that represents when the surface temperature of the body is specified. So make a, an arrow to that and note that that's what it means. It's when the surface temperature of the body is specified. Now, if that's all we care about, then the equation simplifies down a little bit. We just need the complementary error function of the first little bit, and the last part of it drops off, which looks a little bit friendlier to us. Now, this seems a little bit different. If, if you're an eagle-eyed student and you've looked at this carefully, you might have noticed, well, wait a second. T of x, t, okay, that's the position within the body at whatever time I care about. Fine. But usually we subtract off t infinity, the temperature of the fluid. Here we're subtracting off the initial temperature of the body. And then we're dividing by t infinity minus t i, and it's usually the other way around. What is going on here? Why is this different? Well, it just turns out it's different because of the solution, but there's a lot of math here, and if you want to go through it, you're welcome to, that shows that this y-axis, this odd uh, dimensionless temperature, is just one minus the dimensionless temperature that we are used to. Okay? So if you want to go through all this math, great. I'm not going to go through it on this slide. It doesn't matter too much. But that's all this y-axis is. And if I remember right, your author has even... Uh, put it uh, that way, where it's equal to 1 minus theta of x minus t. So what this is giving us is not theta of x minus t, it's 1 minus theta of x minus t. Okay. 